Welcome to iLecture Online, and uh, here we're going to see another example of how to deal with momentum and impulse combined with energy. Now, we're not specifically going to talk about impulse in, in this case, we're just going to talk about momentum and how much energy is lost during a collision. Remember, in any collision, momentum is always conserved, but energy is only conserved as a perfectly elastic collision. In this case, since the objects stick together after a collision, it's definitely not an elastic collision. So, how much energy is lost? So let's read the problem here. It says a 20 kilogram object moving to the right at 10 meters per second collides and sticks to a 15 kilogram object moving to the left at 8 meters per second. What is the final velocity of the two objects and how much energy was lost in the collision? So the first part of the problem is just like any other momentum problem. We have the initial momentum equal to final momentum. But then the second part of the problem is something different is then how much energy is lost. So let's take it one step at a time, starting with uh, momentum initial equals momentum final. So we have two objects that are moving, uh, one coming from the left, one coming from the right. Better a little picture of that. So let's see here, we have a 20 kilogram object. So let's call this M1, which is 20 kilograms. And it's moving to the right at V1 initial equal to 10 meters per second. Okay, we have a second object, which is a 15 kilogram object. So M2 is 15 kilograms, and it is moving to the left, negative velocity, at eight meters per second. So V2 initial equals a minus eight meters per second. So here direction is important in, uh, with momentum. Momentum is a vector quantity, so we always have to take into account the magnitude and the direction. All right, so the initial momentum is M1, V1 initial, plus M2, V2 initial. Understanding that V2 is a negative quantity. And that equals M1 plus M2, because they stick together, it's an inelastic collision, times V final. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out what that final velocity is. So let's solve for final velocity, uh, dividing both sides of the equation by M1 plus M2, pl putting it over here, flip the equation around so we can say that V final is equal to the left side, M1, V1 initial, plus M2, V2 initial, all divided by M1 plus M2. All right, now let's plug in the numbers. So this is equal to the mass, and I'm going to leave the units off, looks a little bit cleaner. So we have 20 kilograms times V1, that would be uh, 10 meters per second in the positive direction, plus the next one is 15 kilograms times V2, which is a minus eight because it's moving to the left, all divided by the sum of the two masses, which is 20 plus 15. And so V final, <clears throat> whoa, there goes my eraser. All right, so V final there, my calculator, I'm ready now. Let's try this. So we have 200 plus, uh, well, it's a minus. Uh, that would be 120 and divide by 35. And it turns out the final velocity is a positive 2.3 meters per second. So since the answer came out to be positive, that means that both will then still be moving to the right at some positive velocity, 2.3 meters per second, which means that the positive momentum of the first object to the right was bigger than the negative momentum of the second object to the left, so the, the end result is you'll still have a motion to the right. But for the second part of the problem, how much energy was lost in the collision? Well, we have to first figure out how much energy the system had before the collision, and remember, the energy in this case will be kinetic energy, and the equation for kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. And since the velocity is squared, that means it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative uh, velocity. It's squared. We, uh, the kinetic energy cannot have a direction. It's a scalar quantity. So we have to add up the energy before. So energy initially is equal to the one-half m1 v1 initial squared, so that would be the kinetic energy of the first object, plus one-half m2 v2 initial squared. So that will give us the kinetic energy before the collision. So that's equal to one-half times the mass, and again I'm leaving off the units for clarity, 20 times 10 squared plus one-half times 15 times a minus 8 squared, and there again since 
the velocity squared, you get a positive quantity out of that. So let's find out how much energy <clears throat> we got. Maybe we can simplify this a little bit without using a calculator. That is, uh, that's 100 and 1 half times 20 is uh, 10. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So this is 1,000 plus uh, 8 squared is 64 times, well, hmm, that's 32, that's 320, that looks like it's 480. And so that would be equal to 1,480 joules. That would be our initial energy. Quickly again, see if I did this right, 64 divided by 2 is 32, 32 times 10 is 320, times 5 is 160 more, that's yep, 480. So didn't need a calculator for that one. All right, see, that's because when I went to school when I was younger, we didn't have these things, so we had to learn how to do that in our head. Okay, uh, for kinetic energy final, energy final, and of course this is kinetic energy, uh, I put a little K in front of it so to delineate that that was kinetic energy. So now we only have one object, basically, the two pieces put together. So we have one half times the sum of the two masses times V final squared. And so that would be one half times, uh, that would be 20 plus 15 times 2.3 squared. And for this one, I think I'll go ahead and use my calculator. It's a little bit more uh, complex and of course I'm going to use the exact number that I got from my calculator because it wasn't exactly 2.3 so we have 2.3 squared uh, times 35 uh, times 0.5 and wow so kinetic energy final is equal to 91 joules so we lost quite a bit of energy in this collision we had this much energy before the collision and that much energy after the collision so the loss, the delta kinetic energy, is equal to um, kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. So that's equal to 91 joules minus 1,480 joules. And so that would be 1,300 minus 1,389 joules. So we lost almost 400 joules in the collision. Almost all of the almost all the energy was lost. Where did that energy go? Well, it turns out, if you actually did an experiment like this, and the block did stick together, move to the right, they would be a little bit warmer because all that energy would have been converted to heat, and then the heat would have been stored in those two blocks. All right, that's how you do one of those types of problems.